Hello friends, let's see what is block diagram of embedded system or what the different blocks are there in the embedded system. So you can see the block diagram of embedded system. Let's see what are the different blocks in the block diagram of embedded system. Now different blocks are the very first is processor second is power source, third is clock and oscillator circuit, fourth is real time clock, fifth is reset and power on reset, sixth is memory. Now let's see one by one what are these different blocks. Now first is memory. Now the embedded system, now it is a fixed dedicated system as we have seen in the other videos. Now in embedded system, software is stored in hardware which is called as firmware. Now this can be stored either in internal RAM or flash ROM or it can be stored in the external flash or it can be stored in ROM of the microcontroller. So there can be different memories with which are there in the embedded system which may be either ROM or PROM or flash memory. Now ROM stands for read only memory, PROM stands for programmable read only memory and the flash memory. Flash memory is reprogrammable memory. The next is processor. Processor is the heart of any system or any embedded system or general purpose system. The main function of processor is to generate or generate the timing signals or it has to do the calculation or it has to do the controlling function. Now while selecting the processor for an embedded system, I have to select see few criteria. Now what are those free criteria? Few, first is instruction set, second is maximum bit of operation, third is speed and fourth is algorithm processing and capability. Let's see this one by one what these are. Now instruction set. Instruction set says that what type of instructions are there? They should be very simple. They shouldn't be very complex and less number of instruction. So my assembly language program can be very easy and my system can become more better. Next is maximum number of bit in a single operation. Now if I'm taking four bit, if I'm taking 8 bit or 16 bit, my system will perform more better if I'm taking 16 bit of data at a time. Next comes speed. Now what is speed? Speed is the crystal frequency at which my processor is functioning. It may be in megahertz or it may be in gigahertz. Now take an example of 8051. It can work at 12 megahertz as well as 16 megahertz. The next is algorithm processing and capability. Now depending upon my embedded system what it function does. If it is doing simple function I can go for the simple type of processor. But if they have to do the complex functions like image processing or signal processing then I have to go for DSP type of processors. Now let's see what are the different types of processors which can be used in embedded systems. Different types of processors are microprocessor, microcontroller, digital signal processor, application specific processor or general purpose processor. So processor can be selected depending upon my functionality or the complexness or the functions or the applications of which my embedded system is used. The next is power source. Now to my embedded system, I can supply power internally or externally. The internal power is supplied that is in terms of battery and external power supply can be given through some adapters. Now embedded system requires some power or it requires a power when it starts functioning till it stops functioning. Now embedded system as I've told you it comprises of many sub parts. So every part will need some sort of power or some power for its running. But at any moment of time it's not necessary that all parts are functioning. So what I can do, I can stop those parts or disable those parts functionality when they are not needed so that power can be saved. Continuous running or on system may consume more power. Now consumption of more power means more usage of battery so battery will drain faster. Now take an example of your cell phone, it is also a embedded system. Now if multiple apps are functioning what happens battery drains faster. So generally what we do we remove some or we put off some apps or close some apps so minimum apps are functioning and minimum power consumption is done so that battery can be used for more amount of time. Disabling some of the units which are not used can save the 
power. Now, while doing the programming of embedded system, what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to use wait and stop instructions so that when the system is not functioning or subsystem is not functioning, it can stop. So, with that, so what will happen? The battery will be saved and more time the battery will function. Next is clock and oscillator circuit. Now, what is the purpose of clock and oscillator circuit? It provides a proper timing signals. Now, the clock is used by CPU, timer and many other subsystems of the process embedded system. Now, when my processor is functioning, it has to take the instruction or read the instruction, take the data, process the data and give the results. Now, all these things are to be done in proper time. Now, clock can be generated with the help of crystal or some additional clock circuitry. So, I can have an internal clock circuitry or I can have an external clock circuitry. But the thing is, this circuit should be highly stable. Now, take an example, the watch which you are using in your hand. Suppose, if it is not functioning properly, it may be working slow or fast and you want to catch a train. Now, you will be in a position that my clock is working fine and if it is being working faster or slower, you may miss that particular train which you are supposed to catch. That is what is the importance of clock. Now, in case of embedded system also, for my functioning properly, the clock is must which should be highly stable. The next is real time clock. Now, real time clock means it will be working with a physical timing system. Now, let's say for example, my system is functioning which should start at 6 a.m. in the morning and it should stop at 12 noon. Now, I'll have a real-time clock system which will be working, which will start the system at 6 a.m. and exactly at 12 noon it will stop. That is with a real world timing system. Real-time clock requires to maintain scheduling various tasks for real-time programming. RTC also used for driving timers, counters and needs in the system. The next is reset and power on reset. Now, reset process starts executing the instruction from a starting address. Now, when I start my system, it has to start at some point and that address is always fixed. At that point, some program is written, that is initialization or boot process. The reset can be done in two different ways. That is when my working system can be resetted or it should get reset when there is power on. So, one is the reset circuit and other is power on reset circuit. So, reset process starts executing various instructions from the starting address. The address is set by processor's program counter. The reset step resets the resets and runs the program in following way. System program that executes from the beginning, system boot up programs or system initialization program. This is what is the function of reset circuit. The next is real time operating system RTOS. Now, real time means a system that are subjected to real time, that is, response should be guaranteed in a specific timing constraint or should meet the specific deadline. A system which is essential to finish a task and sends its services on time. Now, let's take an example of microwave oven. I have set a timer for let's say 10 seconds and I say start. Exactly after 10 seconds, if it is baking some product or if it is cooking some product, that should be completed within that 10 seconds. Now, that is finishes the task and deliver its services. Take another example that is washing machine. In a washing machine, when I am drying my clothes, I will set some timer and once the timing is over, my spinning tub or the drying tub should stop and that is that is a, what is called as delivery of service. So, there are two types of uh, real-time system. One is called as hard real-time system and other is called as soft real-time system. Details about this real-time systems will be seeing in the topic real-time systems. Thank you.